The following is an exclusive presentation of Cablevision local program. TV that's close to home. Toddlers and technology equals creativity. Do you have what it takes to be a part of Madro? That and more now on Neighborhood Journal. Welcome to Cable Vision's Neighborhood Journal. I'm Damian Riley. Welcome back to Cable Vision's Neighborhood Journal. We all remember the lovable cartoon character Scooby-Doo. Well, not all dogs are as lucky as Scooby. We found one organization that is dedicated to helping these animals change their luck. Sheer joy and happiness, and it's great to have a huge dog to come home and just give me a giant hug. There's just such an intelligence and such a soul in there. There's no better feeling when you have a foster dog that you place into a family that's a good Dina fit. was just very cuddly and very velcro-y with us, so within a week she was part of our family right it's away. It's a typical unconditional love that people like about dogs, I think. And um, since she's so big, you get more of it. Founded in 1979, the Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue League, or MAGDRILL, is an organization dedicated to finding loving homes for orphaned Great Danes. The unique thing about MAGDRILL is that we're dealing with giant-sized dogs. Um, 100 to 200 pounds is the average size of a dog. Uh, we're pretty coordinated as far as a rescue organization goes, and our dogs are heavily soon they go into foster care. Um, so they're evaluated, so you have some idea what that dog is going to be like before it's placed with a home. On the average, I would say probably about 400 animals are placed each year in the Mid-Atlantic states. The number one reason that people turn in Great Danes is that they grew too big. I chose Magdrill because uh, they, are, they specialize in Great Danes, they're a Great Dane rescue, they have a lot more information specific to the breed. I decided to adopt um, because I've had several animals in the past that have come from shelters rather than from a breeder or from a pet shop. And the animals tend to be a lot more affectionate. Um, they tend to appreciate you more. And I think they make better pets. What normally happens is that they will find us either via um, the internet or someone will have referred us and from that point they'll fill out an application. We saw something on a, the local TV station about Madrill, uh, went online, looked at the dogs available, uh, submitted an application and then uh, you know if we saw a dog that looked of interest to us we made inquiries. Uh, if it was available we scheduled a family visit. In this case a volunteer will come out to your home and they'll bring a Great Dane with them to see how that Great Dane looks in that person's home and let, you know, lets them see realistically what it would be like. And one of the requirements for adopting a Great Dane is that you have carpeted steps. Since I had my carpeting removed, I found that um, plain wooden steps are not good because the dog can slip and fall. So I have to put carpet treads down on the stairs, which is an easy thing to do. I can do it myself. I also have to improve the fencing that I have in the backyard because I don't know that it would stand up to a Great Dane that wanted to jump on the fence. Another important element of the process is fostering, a safe haven for the Danes while they're awaiting adoption. Great Danes don't do well in shelters. They don't do well in kennel situations. They do so much better in a foster home, and we have so many that need to be adopted. So put them in a foster home where they're getting love and attention and training that they probably didn't have before, you can really rehabilitate a dog that maybe wasn't so desirable and turn it into a, a very good companion for someone. And you do have different feelings with different animals. <laughs> Some dogs you're very, very sad to see go, and others you're like, yay, <laughs> he's adopted, he found a good home. The specific types of people that we're looking for to adopt or foster are basically people who are dog lovers with very big hearts for a very giant dog. The bigger the dog, the better. <laughs> They're called Velcro dogs, and they really think they're puppies. They like to sit with you, so they don't realize they're 130 plus. Our adoption of the Dane, it's worked out great. Um, Zena is a real people dog. We come downstairs in the morning, and she trots over to say hello every morning without fail. So that's kind of fun. I'm impressed with the adoption process. I know that some people feel that it's um, 
too invasive and too thorough, but I really feel that uh, by going through this process that um, I'm going to have the perfect environment for the dog. Our experience with the Mid-Atlantic Great Dane League was, was positive. They were very helpful. I don't think I'd go back to another breeder. We've had a really good experience with Zena. It feels good to help out another dog instead of being abandoned or abused someplace. You see them drive away and many times I'm in tears and they're usually happy tears because you know that you've taken a dog and you've turned it around and put it into a, a family where it's a good fit and, and made a good companion for someone. The Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue League has a variety of Great Danes available now for adoption. For more information, call 201-919-3199 or visit them at www.midatlanticdanerescue.com. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of Cablevision's Neighborhood Journal. And remember, this show is about you, so let's hear from you with your comments, questions, or story ideas. You can reach us at 201-405-0303 or email us at clp2 at cablevision.com. For all of us here at Neighborhood Journal, thanks for watching and keeping it close to home. See you next time.